My name is Sharon Gerstel and I'm director of the UCLA Stavros Niarchos Foundation Center for the Study of Hellenic Culture. This discussion is the first event of 10 days of films, lectures and book discussions that are the fruit of a productive collaboration between our center, the Consulate General of Greece in Los Angeles and Los Angeles Greek Film Festival. In order to register for these events, please visit the website of the UCLA SNF Hellenic Center or that of Los Angeles Greek Film Festival. The event is being held under the auspices of the Greek Ministry of Foreign Affairs and in partnership with the Panhypoetic Federation of America and the UCLA Alan D. Levy Center for Jewish Studies. I gratefully acknowledge Aliki Perotti and Seth Frank, who have graciously provided financial support for the entire event, enabling all lectures and films, including Romaniotes, to be offered free of cost. The title of our event, Heritage and Memory, recalls the birthright that we inherit as both Greeks and as Jews, and the memory that we are obligated to protect, both for those who cannot speak and for those who must hear. Today, on International Holocaust Remembrance Day, the anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau, we honor the memory of Europe's Jews, including nearly 8,000 innocent Greek Jews, men, women, and children, Yayades, Papudes, and Gonakia, who were targeted for annihilation. We embrace those who survived, and we mourn those survivors, most recently, Esther Cohen, who have passed, May their memories be a blessing. And now as forever, and in the presence of our esteemed speaker who carries the burden of keeping the memory of the Romagnotis alive, we collectively vow our support and our understanding as we say with him and for him, potek sana, leolam lo, never again. Today, we have asked the Honorable Moises Elisaf to speak to us about the Jewish community of Yanima, a community he loves and protects, but to also tell us something about the beautiful city on the lake for which he serves as mayor. His short presentation will be followed by questions that I will pose about the Romaniotis and my colleague, Dr. Anastasia Lukaito Sidaris, Associate Dean of the UCLA Luskin School of Public Affairs, and distinguished professor of urban planning, will then ask the mayor about Ioannina's modern mm -hmm. life. That's my question. Look at the way it's. And its prospects for the future. After these brief interactions, we will open the screen to questions, which you can either offer by typing in chat or by raising your hand and being recognized. We will then, at that time, ask you to unmute yourself. We are fortunate today to have present with us a number of distinguished guests. Her Excellency, the Ambassador of Greece to the United States, Alexandra Papadopoulou, will officially open this event. Following the Ambassador's remarks, we will be playing a recorded message from Dr. Stathios Lianos Liandis, Special Envoy of the Greek Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Combating Antisemitism and Safeguarding the Memory of the Holocaust and Head of the Greek delegation to the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. Finally, on behalf of the pan Federation of America, one of our co-sponsors, President John Katsibadis will also welcome the speaker. At this moment then, may I ask you to please warmly welcome our wonderful ambassador, Alexandra Papadopoulou. Thank you so much. Today, International Holocaust Remembrance Day is a day of somber commemoration, a day in which we honor the millions of Jewish lives taken in an unspeakable manner by forces of darkness and evil, and of unfathomably inhuman, leaving an indelible stain on humanity. We mourn the decimation of the Jewish communities of Greece, but we also celebrate the achievements and contributions of Greeks of Jewish descent living in Greece today, 
a small but flourishing community integrated into the mainstream of Greek life, uh, into the mainstream of society in such fields uh, as science, politics, uh, arts, economy, and so many more. This is also a day when we hold ourselves accountable and renew our commitment to never forget uh, and to do all we can to never allow such atrocities to happen again. I thank you really, and it's an honor for me to present uh, some remarks at the beginning of this remarkable 10-day program, Heritage and Memory, a focus on Jewish Greece. This program encourages all of us to consider the history, culture, trauma and resilience of the Romaniotis and Sephardim Greeks of Jewish descent, whose presence has deeply enriched and continues to reach Greece. Rich in discussions, lectures, book presentations and films, this program is an indication of the important work being done today to share, document and preserve for future generations the Greek Jewish history and the story of their and humanity's darkest hour. This coming March, Greece assumes the presidency of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, affirming our joint commitment to remember the Holocaust, to recall the stories of those whose lives were brutally ended or disrupted, and to affirm our commitment that never again will we stand by and allow such horrors to reoccur because it's not just committing these atrocities, it's always staying silent. Silence is the barrier that we have to, to break. It is indeed an honor for me to share the podium today with uh, today's main speaker, the Honorable Mayor of the City of Ioannina, Moses Evisaf. No person characterizes the resilience of Greece's Jewish community better than the mayor the first Greek Jew to be elected mayor of a major city in Greece. The son of Holocaust survivors, a doctor, a leader of the community, Mayor Elisav embodies for all of us uh, the hopes and dreams of those whose voices can no longer be heard. I look forward to hearing his remarks about the history of his people in his city, one of Greece's most beautiful oldest and historical cities uh, where Greek Jews lived for over 2000 years, one of the oldest Jewish communities in Europe. I also want to recognize the contributions of the events organizers. Uh, of course, the Greek Minister of Foreign Affairs, which is an honor to represent here. The Consulate General of Greece in Los Angeles, uh, my dear colleague, uh, who is the Consul General and so much, uh, 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 Help, worked and helped for this event. The UCLA Stavros Foundation Center for the Study of Hellenic Culture, the Los Angeles Greek Film Festival, the Panipirotic Federation of America, and the Allen D. Leaf Center for Jewish Studies, as well as the speakers, the authors, the filmmakers, all those who are participating. Thank you so much again. The day, 27th of January, has been established as an annual International Day of Commemoration in Memory of the Martyrs of the Holocaust by a resolution adopted by the General Assembly of the United Nations in 2005, 60 years after the end of World War II. The Soan was the worst tragedy of humankind. Yet, the dangers and demons are regrettably still present in our societies. The Holocaust stands out as one of the defining moments of history that has saved the conscience of mankind. It is unique in its roots, implementation and envision totality. We are here to honor the victims of the Holocaust and unparalleled crime. We are together to mourn the loss of so many and so much. The world as a duty to remember that the Holocaust was a systematic attempt to eliminate the Jewish people. It would be a dangerous error to think of the Holocaust as simply the result of the insanity of a group of criminal Nazis. On the contrary, the Holocaust was the culmination of millennia of hatred and discrimination targeting the Jews, what we now call anti-Semitism. 
The indigenous Jewish communities of Greece represent the longest continuous Jewish presence in Europe. These communities, along with the Jews who settled in Greece after the expulsion from Spain, were almost completely destroyed in the Holocaust. The Axis power defeated the Greek army in the spring of 1941 and occupied Greece until October 1944. Bulgaria annexed Russ, Germany occupied Macedonia, including Thessaloniki, Piraeus, and Western Crete, and Italy occupied the remainder of the mainland and the islands. Where Jews resided determined not only their subsequent fate, but also the ultimate possibility of escape. Even though deportations did not start until March 1943, Greece lost at least 90% of its Jewish population during the Holocaust. Between 70 and 75,000 Greek Jews perished, statistically the highest percent of the Jewish loss of any official occupied country. While the number is seared into our collective consciousness, the individual stories are often silenced and added to the grander narrative of horror and loss. What is also rarely discussed is the loss of possibility those thousand lives represented. The families they never had, which by now would have expanded into third and even fourth generations, the contributions to society that each and every one of those souls could have made, the lives they would have lived and the legacies they would have left. In the plenary of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, conducted in the city of Ferrara on 29th of November 2018, anonymously decided that Greece is to take over the presidency of the Alliance for the year 2021. Greece's goals for the presidency include collaboration with regional organizations of important historical centers of Greek Jewry in order to conduct academic and cultural events and actions. For the purpose of preserving and safeguarding the memory of the Holocaust and the fight against antisemitism, the effort for expanding the alliance with the incorporation of new member countries and opening the doors of the organization to the civil society with a goal of garnering more support for its objectives. The Greek Iowa Presidency, which coincides with the 200th anniversary of the Greek Revolution, will promote a network of academic, educational and cultural activities focusing on the role of education and social media in preserving Holocaust remembrance, as well as on promoting the 2,000-year-old history of Greek Jews. It is important to remember that the Holocaust did not start with executions. It began with rhetorics and proceeded to the violation of fundamental rights, culminating in genocide. That is why we feel so strongly the need to combat all forms of hate speech, including antisemitism. On behalf of the Greek delegation to the IRA and the upcoming presidency, I would like to thank all of you who came to this event tonight. Now, it's time to speak and investigate, not only to honor the Holocaust martyrs, but because we have to justify our humanity. Your Excellency, Ambassador Papadopoulou, distinguished guests, Mayor Dr. Moises El Saf, on behalf of the Panibirati Federation of America as its president, we are honored and happy to have the opportunity to co-sponsor this conversation with the mayor. As you know, Moses Elisaf was born and grew up in the city of Ioannina. He left for his studies to Athens, to Tel Aviv and elsewhere, but returned to his city to work, prosper, and then later teach. He could have emigrated practically anywhere in the world. He would be very successful, but he returned to his home city. He's a true, Yagnotti, a pure Yagnotti, a son of Ioannina. Apart from his terrific medical work, he engaged in public life, holding numerous positions in the city council, engaging in the culture of the city, 
leading in many positions, he stayed active in his religious and civil community. This speaks volumes for him. It speaks also volumes for the citizens of Ioannina, a city of roughly 98% Christian population, which rewarded him in 2019 in the elections with 50 plus percent of the votes. It speaks values for them. It speaks values for Epiros and the ma main and important city of Ioannina. It also speaks volumes for 21st century Greece, an open-minded and pluralistic society. On behalf of the Panipirotti Federation of America, I warmly welcome you to the conversation with our mayor and thank you for your attention, for your attendance. Thank you. Now with great honor that I ask the mayor of Ioannina, Moises Elisaf, to speak to us, for us to learn from him, save your questions. We'll have ample time for you to ask them following his remarks. Your honor. Your Excellency, Mr. President of the Paneperotic Federation of America, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the organizers for their kind invitation, as well as Your Excellency for your kind introduction. It's a great honor and privilege to present today the eventful life and history of the Jewish community of Ioannina to the memory of those lost during the German occupation. It is also an enormous challenge for me since, since I am the president of the Jewish community for the last 20 years, but also I, I am for more than one year the mayor of the city of Ioannina, and thus I had a strong commitment to preserve the memory of the city and to make known its rich multicultural past. Ioannina for many centuries was the capital, the leading Jewish center of the so-called Romanian Jewry, in other words, the center of the Greek speaking Jews whose roots go all the way back to the Hellenistic period. They derived their name from the internal name Romania of the Byzantine Empire. The Jewish community of Ioannina is mentioned since the Byzantine period. In fact, in the degree of the Emperor Andronicus II in the year 1339, freedom and peace was given to the city's Jews. However, the origin of the Jews of Ioannina is not clear. Historically speaking, it was most likely that the Jewish community was formed after the 8th century by immigrants from Nicopolis. Even though the Byzantine era was a difficult time for the Jewish population of Ioannina, due to administrative changes in attitudes toward Jews, they were treated reasonably under Ottoman rule since they were allowed freedom of religious observance, were given sp special privileges in trade and work, and they were allowed autonomy within their own communities. At the beginning of the 20th century, approximately 5,000 Jews lived in Ioannina. Jews live in two quarters, one inside the city's fortress and one which lay outside the walls. Most of the Jews of Ioannina were traveling merchants, laborers and shop clerks, and some of them were store owners and importers. Other Jews worked in industry and in the production of kosher wine and cheeses. In 1924, few years after the city liberation from the Ottoman Empire, the Greek government passed a law which forbade commerce on Sundays, creating economic difficulties for many of the Jewish merchants. Thus, many charitable Jewish associations operated at that time in Ioannina to face up with the financial problems of most of the Jewish population. 
At that time, a number of Jewish schools were established for the better education of the new generation. The most important ran under the supervision of Alliance, of Alliance Francaise Israeli, with an excellent reputation in the city. The first decade of the 20th century, many Jews of Ioannina left the city and moved to Athens. Indeed, the Jews of Ioannina were the first core of the Jewish community of Athens, where the old synagogue is called even now Yanyotiki, or migrated to the United States and Israel, where founded the Keila Kedusha Yanina in New York, but also the Beit Avraham and Ochel Sara synagogue in the Mahane Yehuda neighborhood in Jerusalem. Most of the Jews of Ioannina were traditional, and the city had two big synagogues, the Kal Kadosh Yasan, Old Holy Synagogue or Inner Synagogue, which exists to these days, and the, Kah and the Kahal Kadosh Hassan, the New Holy Community or Outer Synagogue, which destroyed during the German occupation and then demolished. The community did not have an appointed rabbi, but only an acting rabbi. However, eminent Bible scholars contributed to the world of the religious literature. Jews of Ioannina used Greek as their everyday language of communication from the moment they settled. They were inspired by the local culture and customs and they were versatile enough to blend them with their own to create the unique Greek Jewish tradition. Their distinct language was Judeo Greek Yavanic, a Greek dialect that contained Hebrew along with some Aramaic and Turkish words. However, they retained the religion identity as can, be see, as can be seen in the synagogues they built and the distinct form of religious observance they maintained. Even though with the arrival of Sephardi in the late 15th century, most Romanian communities were absorbed into the culture of Sephardi, Ioannina community, along with some other communities of Epirus, Peloponnese and Crete, retained the Romanian tradition. Instead, the Sephardi Jews settled in Ioannina were assimilated into the Romanian population and were then joined by others of the same faith from southern Italy and Sicily. The most notable differences between Romanian and Sephardi were in the language they used as well as their dress, food, and form of religious observance. The Jews of Ioannina had and still have their own style of lamentation and eulogies, as well as their own ketubah, which was influenced by an early ketubah from the land of Israel. The versions used in Ioannina were those of Romanian Jews, whose traditions are distinct from the Sephardic Jewish tradition common to most of the Jewish communities in Greece. Thus, for example, the community had some unique traditions, among them the celebration of Rosh de Sadar, otherwise called Irtaman, where the children of the community went from door to door among the Jewish houses, collecting sweets and fruits. Furthermore, Jews of Ioannina also had a custom whereby they hung civil plaques on the parochet, that is the ornamental curtain covering the front of the Torah, in order to commemorate people or events. As previously mentioned, the community was well incorporated in the city life throughout many centuries, and especially after the city liberation from the Ottoman Empire, 1933, though several anti -Jew Jewish riots broke out in the city 
in the late 19th century on the occasion of Orthodox Easter under pretext of accusations of realistic crimes as well as before Second World War II, mainly due economic conflicts enforced by the surrounding anti-Semitic climate. The Jews of Ioannina responded to all military needs of their country. Some of them fell in the Battle of Sankarius during the Asia Minor campaign, as well as in the Albanian front during the, during the Second World War. Ioannina became part of the Greek state after the successful ending of the Balkan War. Wars. The Jews of the city played an active part in the social and political life of the local society and in that of the country as a whole. They were in good terms with their Christian fellow citizens, sharing joys and sorrows, hopes and difficulties, while also maintain their Jewish identity through particular aspects of everyday life. Yosef Elia, the poet and intellectual of Jewish descent of his time, was a true child of the socio-political changes which marked the 1920s and made his name as the ideal representative of the interaction between the Greek civilization and Jewish tradition. When the Axis forces gained control in Greece, 1941, Ioannina came under Italian administration, which took no measures against the Jews and granted many permits to Jews who wanted to leave for Athens. In July 1943, the German division with Colonel Paul Stettner in charge arrived at the, at the city and immediately exerted pressure on the Jewish population. A few people, mainly young men, took to the mountains and joined resistance groups. Few, few Ioannina Christians, ordinary people, officials and clergy stood by their persecuted fellow townspeople. On 25 of March 1944, the remaining 1,870 Romano Jews were taken through the snow in 97 covered trucks via Tricola to Larissa, and from there they were carried onto trains and transported to Auschwitz Birkenau. 92% of the Romano Jews of Ioannina were exterminated in the Nazi camps. The operation against the Jewish community was undertaken by the SSS and Elvise Division, commanded by von Stettner, which arrived in Ioannina in late July 1943. At two o'clock on the Sabbath morning of the March 25, 1944, the Greek Independence Day, German, German units commanded by an, of, by an officer named Hofer and accompanied by interpreters of the official collaborating police awakening the Jews. Jews who lived outside the city walls were ordered to meet at Mavili Square by Ioan in a lake. The men were put in one group and the women and children in another. The Jews who lived inside the city walls assembled at the military hospital where both men and women were packed together in trucks. A crucial point for discussion is the high percentage of losses of the community during the war. Thus, although both resistant groups, Am and Des, accepted as many Jews as took refugee in their territory and helped save them from danger, they, don't, they did not take the initiative to organize the exodus of at least part of the Jewish population of Ioannina as they have done in Athens, Volos, and Larissa. Another cause was the general indifference of most of the Christian inhabitants on the days presenting 
the pitiful event. And finally, the Germans could never have su su succeeded in their mass arrest of the Yuan in a Jewish community without the aid of the local police who collaborated with them. The problems noticed during the return of the survivors in the city should also be discussed. The attorneys found their homes occupied. Many Jewish homes were occupied by squatters who were reluctant to vacate their rent-free accommodations. Many other Jewish homes were commandeered by the Iranian authorities to house refugees from the Greek civil war. Owners or the surviving relatives of the owners had to appeal to the courts for their property. This took time, even though laws had been passed to help the returning Jewish survivors. In many cases, the courts supported Greek Christians' claims to Jewish property. I have to mention some details concerning the Holy Synagogue of Ioannina. The ancient sacred synagogue of Ioannina is one of the largest and oldest buildings preserved in Greece. The monument consists of the rectangular vaulted pillared wall with many windows. Beyond the built inscriptions on renovations of the building, the reconstruction time of the synagogue is unknown. It was probably built over an older one. The main entrance of the synagogue in its west wall was used solely by the men of the community. And you can also see the women's session, which is raised by an external staircase. The design of the synagogue is typical of the Romanian synagogues with the polar axis alignment of the Hall and Bema built against the east and west walls respectively. The hall is of marble and contains the Torah scrolls covered by wooden or silver tikim. At the other end of the synagogue and opposite the hall is the Bema, the reader's platform. During the occupation, the synagogue was used as a municipal library. A great number of Torah scrolls, books and textiles were hidden and returned, uh, returned to the surviving members of the community. In the marble inscriptions, you can see the names of the approximately 1,800 Jews perished in the concentration camps, mainly in Auschwitz-Birkenau. There is also a cemetery with thousands of graves and few tombs, which unfortunately has been repeatedly vandalized the last years, possibly by fascists who unfortunately were never arrested by the police. When the Second World War ended, the Jewish community of Vienna numbers 181 souls, 112 people who survived the genocide and 69 who saved themselves by hitting or taking to the mountains. The community council was immediately reestablished. It got in touch with international and Greek organizations asking for material support to overcome acute practical problems of housing, medical care, and rehabilitation of the Holocaust survivors. Many of the survivors immigrated to the United States of, or Israel, but never lost touch with their hometown. The constant support of New York-based societies of Jewish immigrants to the United States from Ioannina, such as the Yanina Relief Fund, the Brotherhood and Sisterhood of Ioannina, and also Keila Kedusha Yanina, is not worthy and bears witness to the sense of belonging and community spirit which common roots produce. Romano Jews, whose ancestral home is in Ioannina, still maintain links with their past keeping alive the awareness of their centuries-long and unique heritage. As previously mentioned, Ioannina has always been multicultural, multilingual, and multireligious city, 
with Christian, Islamic, and Jewish influences defined its identity. The presence today of Islamic mosques and the Jewish synagogue among the many Christian churches is an internal proof of the multicultural history and tradition of Ioannina through the passage of time. The citizens of Ioannina with my elections have clearly shown they condemn the hate that is born from intolerance and antisemitism and appreciate the value of a person regardless of his religious belief. Additionally, from the very beginning of the humanitarian crisis in Greece, Ioannina has hosted in camps in the urban setting a significant number of refugees and asylum seekers. Currently, the city hosts more than 2,500 refugees and asylum seekers, mainly from the Syrian Arab Republic, Republic of Iraq and Islamic Republic of Afghanistan. It is, and it is the first time in the city that operates a refugee and migrants integration council as advisory body to the city council. As mayor of Ioannina, I have to accomplish the mission to serve all my citizens and act in their best interests. I will strive in every day to be worthy for their confidence and to fulfill my duties the best I can. The people have a right to expand, to expect that their representatives act according to their needs. Our main tasks for, from the assumption of our duties were to improve the citizens' everyday life, to increase the efficacy of the provided services, to transform the city into a modern smart city with protection of the environment and the planned extraversion of the city with the promotion of the city benefits, including its beauty, its rich historical past, and the impressive monuments, including those of the rich multicultural past and also its infrastructures. At the dying being, our main priority remains the prevention of COVID-19 spread and protect the more vulnerable citizens. Considering the extremely urgent and unforeseen needs to address the negative consequences of the occurrence of the pandemic, limit its spread and take relevant and necessary measures for the country's economic labor market, we proceeded with the establishment of a social care solidarity center aiming the provision of social services to vulnerable groups of or individuals, including asylum seekers, migrants, Roma. In this context, there is available a phone helpline and in cooperation with home health program, we provide food items, personal protective equipment, medicines, psychological support, nursing, and medical care to citizens without supporting framework, both natives and also migrants. I think, and now I have to, I should finish. I thank you once again for giving me the opportunity to present the history of our community and discuss with you the challenges of preserving the memory of the community today in a rapidly changing, changing city like Ioannina. Thank you for your attention and I'm at your disposal to answer any questions you will. Thank you so much, Mera and Saf. Um, your words are inspirational to all of us. So I think what I'd like to do is simply thank you and to say that on this most sorrowful day you've also given us hope for the future of the Romagnotis, for uh, remembering this community, for uh, reinvigorating the synagogue and I think we can thank you enough for introducing us to your people, both your people in Ioannina and your family, your greater family. Um, so I want to thank you and I think what I'd like to do is to ask people to come back on Friday to listen to Marsha 
thinking about the synagogue in Manhattan. And perhaps we can reconvene and follow up with questions that link both the precious Jews of Yanina and those Roma Yotis in Diaspora. If that's okay with you, I just want to thank you and wish you a good evening and wish everybody a peaceful day, a day in which we should all remember what's important to us um, and what we need to do. We all need to activate our memories and bond together to stamp out this anti-Semitism, which is rising everywhere in the world today. So thank you, Mayor, so much. And thank you, uh, Ambassador, for your presence today and John Katibaris for representing your organization so beautifully. And of course, to my colleague, Anastasia Lukaitusideris, we look forward to seeing everybody on Friday. We will post the video so everybody can listen again to the mayor's wonderful words. Thank you. Thank you.